Chapter 12 I bought a boat from a fisherman in Tianyi village. He had to think me addle-brained. For sailing away on the cusp of winter, but he taught me how to cut the sea with my oars, how to read the wind to navigate south, and how to throw a net to catch fish. Meanwhile, his wife tucked a blanket and a box of fried fish cakes and boiled eggs into the boat. Their daughter also tied a charm a little red doll with two beads as eyes for protection. When I found him, hours later, the unexpected kindness nearly brought me to tears. But I'd promised Kiki. No tears, not until I found my brothers. A few hours before dusk, I left the island at long last, helming a boat barely long enough to fit. Me lying down, and with one sail that juddered against the wind. Doesn't look like it hold up well against a storm, Kiki said, voicing my worries. The sky's clear, I replied as I rode. There's no storm ahead. Winter was my greater concern. The cold chased us south, a perpetual rhyme of frost stinging my face. Every night I prayed to the gods, asking them for just two things, that I'd find my brothers, and that I wouldn't freeze to death in my sleep. I kept close to shore, letting the sail do most of the work. Only when the weather was fair and the winds were strong did I dare row across the North Sea Strait. Dawns blended into dusks, and I spent so much time surrounded by water that I began to dream in blue. Sometimes I called out to Sirio in my mind, hoping he'd hear me and dramatically leap out of the sea in his dragon form. He could command the currents to stop fighting my boat, or he could make the water a little warmer. But he never appeared, and I soon gave up. When I wasn't rowing, I kept my hands busy to distract myself from the cold. I didn't have paper. So I folded bits of dried kelp into the shapes of birds, melting wax from my candles to hold them together. What are you going to do with all those birds? Kiki asked. I shrugged. It's something to do. Oh, good, said Kiki. I was worried you thought you could make a wish. You said once you'd wish me into a real crane. I'd rather stay made of paper, thank you. Why is that? Look what trouble having a pulse has gotten you into, Shiori. Kiki Tsked. You're betrothed. Almost gutted you with his sword can you imagine how painful that would have been? She shuddered. You. Couldn't even tell him who you were. Yes, well, I thank the great gods I skipped our ceremony. I shuddered too, but for a different. Reason. To think that everyone used to sing Takin's praises. I knew my tutors had been lying to me. I'd asked father once, if Takin is so wonderful, why doesn't he ever come to court to visit? Father had replied that a boy like Bushi and Takin wouldn't fare well in Jindara. Certainly not. He was a brute, just as I'd pictured him, and I finally felt vindicated for hating him all these years. I just couldn't believe father had been willing to marry me to that barbarian. He really must have been under Rakama's spell. I'd be perfectly happy if I never heard the name Bushi and Takin ever again, I declared to Kiki. Once I returned home, I would ask father to annul the engagement. If I ever returned. On the ninth sun after I left Tianyi village, I reached Kiata's mainland. I was cold and tired and starved but the sight of land spurred a burst of energy in me, and I plied my oars into the water and forged ahead. I navigated the shoreline slowly, taking in the craggy mountains bordering the forest. Some so high they pierced the clouds. The forest itself was vibrant, for unlike in Tianyi, the trees here had only begun to lose their leaves. They dazzled my eyes with their rhymes of emerald and gold and ruby and stretched as far as I could see, seemingly without end. This was the Jensa the never-ending forest. As I rode closer, a chorus of birds exploded from the trees into the sky. Have you seen her brothers? Kiki called out to the birds. There's six cranes with crimson crowns. 
the birds eyed Kiki, surprised that a paper crane spoke to them. Then they chirped their replies. They say they haven't seen any cranes come this way, Kiki translated. I turned to Kiki, amazed. You can speak to them. She shrugged by lifting a wing. How else do you think I've been looking for your brothers all this time? While I listened, Kiki called out to the butterflies and the bees, even the mosquitoes that pestered me at night. Have you seen six cranes with crimson crowns? Always the answer was no. And always Kiki would relay the animal's same response, but we'll look out for them and tell them to find you if we do. So it went, until finally, just as dusk was about to fall, we drifted onto the Bayun River. There. A beaver was working on his dam. Kiki listened to his grumbles and barks. He says the river bend is just around the corner and that we should pull ashore there. There's danger ahead. Thank you, MR. Beaver, I gestured, and Kiki communicated my question, have you seen six cranes pass by? Six cranes? Like those? He looked to the sky. My breath caught in my throat. Soaring above us were six cranes, their crimson crowns stark against the ashen clouds. I jumped to my feet, waving my oars. The boat jerked, and as I stumbled to catch my balance, my brothers flew on. Brothers. I flailed. Kiki, tell them I'm here. But Kiki's attention was elsewhere. The beaver had disappeared, as had the butterflies. A cascade of water surged ahead. Watch out, Shiori. My bird rushed in front of me, shouting and shrieking words that I could barely hear. Water pounded my little boat from every direction, the waves tossing us about. We spun, caught in an unyielding current, rushing forward toward a waterfall. Terror gripped me. There were no boulders to jump onto, no shore within reach. I pulled the rudder as far as it would go to turn my boat around, but the water was too violent, propelling me forward with alarming speed and sweeping away my oars. We careened toward the falls. Tell my brothers I'm here. I shouted to Kiki in my mind. Hurry. While my bird vaulted into the sky, the river became a torrent, threatening to engulf me. I gripped the sides of my boat as it rocked against the waves. The little red doll, the fishing net, my blankets everything was washed away. I would be next. A veil of mist obscured the waterfall, but I could hear it. I could feel it, too, the cold spray in my face, the strong current that would soon bring me to my end. The boat teetered on the brink before shooting over the falls. My stomach plummeted, but, for a moment, I was flying. I could see a rainbow at the bottom a beautiful last sight, I supposed. With the water cascading all around. No, I was flying. Strong white wings beat against my back, and flashes of crimson darted in the mist, accompanied by furious squawking. My brothers my brothers had come for me. They threaded their necks under my arms and legs, biting my drenched robes as they lifted me. They soared so fast and so high that my feet dangled over the waterfall and my stomach clenched from the height. But I wasn't afraid. I cupped Kiki in my hands, knowing she was just as content as I was to see my brother's wings skim the clouds. Finally I had found them. And they had found me.